What a disaster. Sorry guys. Um, I had forgotten is the honest answer, but then my um, my IT, I got an email on my, my I've had IT issues this morning, Microsoft Outlook's gone down, PC's gone down, etc, etc. And then I got an email um, reminder from Vicky um, that we were due on, so I do apologise. Um, I won't rush through anything. Uh, we'll still go at the same pace that we're going to go, go by before. Okay, um, I'm fanatical. Um, thanks, Peter. I'm fanatical about fibs, which a few of you will probably have known uh, by now. Um, the market, as in life, has a tendency to move as in life, which I'm also going to explain, has a tendency to move around these Fibonacci levels, okay? Uh, if you don't know about them, please educate yourself to them, okay? 61.8% being the magic, um, uh, or the golden ratio. But also, there's so many things in, in, in FX trading and, uh, and all uh, stocks and uh, commodity trading that are based around these Fib levels, and they're not to be ignored. And the reason why I say they're not to be ignored is because we can get some fantastic, um, very tight entry levels um, if we know what we're looking for. Okay, and it's like everything you have to educate yourself, and obviously that's why you guys are here today. Okay, so we we want to look at fib levels. We want to look at price action around these fib levels, and that's all I'm going to use today. Okay, so I'm going to. I know we've got a chart up in front of me that's all got loads of weird and wonderful things on it, and I'm going to delete everything, okay? So, let's get rid of the lot, okay? So, we're just going to have a plain chart. Obviously, these aren't what I look at on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, the chart previously was. Um, but I'm just going to talk to you about how you can possibly... I mean, my trading system is based around FIBS, okay? Uh, everything I look at is, is based really around FIBS, even down to my RSI. Okay, I use, normally use a 15 EMA and a 62 EMA, <coughs> which are both based around FIB levels. But we can get symmetrical patterns okay, from FIB levels, which have a, a very decent um, hit ratio, um, around about 70%. Okay? So if we can get 7 out of 10 winners, let's close the window, it's getting a bit cold, uh, then we know that we're going to be profitable overall. Not only that, but the symmetrical patterns offer us very, very good. Just bear with me one second. Okay, so not just Elliott Wave. We've got symmetrical patterns, we've got extension patterns, we've got retracement patterns. So we're going to go through all of those today, and we're going to show you how you can get very, very good high, high, high res, uh, results, low risk. Uh, trades, okay. And the first one I've got up, I'm going to show you is EuroCAD. And the reason I'm going to show you EuroCAD is because um, we've entered a short trade in this one this morning, okay. So the weekly chart, we're talking about price action. We can see we had a decent trend to the downside here. Now, talking about fibs, okay, we've got an extension tool here. Let me just put it on our first swing, okay. And they're not, it's not an exact science, like everything else. Um, what time frame do I prefer for FIBS? I take them in all time frames, Ray. I, I, I look from uh, weeklies, I even look at monthlies at the end of every month, okay, to have a look at price action. Um, but I look at weeklies, dailies, four hourly, hourly. Uh, and then really I want my price action to be sort of 15 minute candles, five minute candles even. Um, so, Euro CAD, okay, a decent sell-off. We can see this in the daily chart, okay. Price action that we're looking for. When we when we talk about price action, everyone talks about Doji's, um, bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing, uh, morning stars, evening stars, etc. What I prefer to see, okay, is a candle which I call an we call an outside bar. So it's not just. Um, <laughs> it's not just a, a bullish or a bearish engulfing candle. It completely overtakes the previous candle. Let's just get my I've got a drawing tool in here somewhere. Let's get this 
this up. We can use this. Okay. So what we talk about being outside bars, you can see this one completely engulfs the price action from the previous candle. Okay, so that's an outside bar. It's not just a bullish engulfing bar, it's an outside bar. Okay, here we have an outside bar. Here we have an outside bar. This isn't an outside bar, okay? Um, boom, boom, boom. So all the way down to the bottom. So we're looking for these outside bars, and the opposite of an outside bar is an inside bar, okay? And an inside bar is known as an inside Arami bar. And that's completely different to an outside, okay? Completely opposite. An outside bar shows a complete change in trader sentiment. So here, the bias was the outside. We had numerous negative days. And then, the sellers were still in control in the morning, but that got reversed, okay? So the sentiment completely changed and moved to the upside, okay? And then we got our rally higher. Same here, the move up was to the upside, it then reversed, and the bias is to the downside. Now, one thing I'm going to mention here is uh, something called a Marabuzo level, okay? So a Marabuzo level is 50% of a bullish or a bearish candle. So it's a 50% of the open and the close, not the high and the low, okay? And we've got a little tool here. Somewhere that will give us our marabuzos. Okay, so it's just these these lines that, that project outwards. And if you notice, obviously the market moves in highs and lows. Just bear with me one second. Stop. So the marabuzo level, okay, is 50% of uh, a bearish or a uh, bullish, strong bullish candle. Okay, and sometimes. Obviously, we can use those levels to look for rejections. And Euro Sterling has actually got one on the weekly chart at the moment, which we'll talk about in a bit. Okay, so we're looking at Marabuzo levels. We're looking at inside bars, outside bars. We're looking at fibs. Okay, so why be bearish in Euro CAD at the moment? Whew, let's get my breath. Okay, so then we go to the daily. So we've had this big strong move lower. We then want to look at chart patterns, formations, okay, on the way back up on the corrective sequence, okay. The corrective sequence can be quite hard to form, okay. Um, the first leg can be five legs um, or three legs, then the middle leg is normally in three, and then the third leg in three or five. So it can be, could become quite difficult, but again, we can use our Marabuzos, our price action, etc. The fact that we want to see higher highs and higher lows, okay, to reverse the trend, and then we can start forecasting from our fibs, okay. And here we put our extension on, and we actually posted this just before um, the um, the Bank of Canada uh, rate decision uh, the other day. So, and also just notice this, okay. This was the fib on the way down, okay, where we got this confluence area or this area that attracted um, a lot of price action. If you then look, this is why I'll leave a lot of my fibs on, if you then look across, that fib on the way down acted as decent resistance okay, on the way back up. But we get rid of that. So now we've got one, two, we've got a choppy three-legged correction and then we've got a move to the upside. Now if we just Put this on to, I'll just pull this in a bit. We now expect to be in a corrective sequence lower, okay? So we put our trend channel on, we remove our fit, okay? And we can see that we're sort of building a bit of a skewed head and shoulders formation, okay? But it's this, it's this rejection, this push lower that gives us this impulsive push lower as well, which gives us the bias, okay, to the downside. Uh, the fib retracement, and it's all about risk reward trading, okay. So we're coming in around 38.2% on the trend channel. If it breaks, then obviously this is our prime area, 125.70. But this really should be 
our first target area, about 126.75. Now, why does this look good? Okay, again, we don't want to be selling into this first um, this first sequence lower. Um, what we want to do, because we know the market has to correct. Okay, we know that we're looking for uh, lower highs and lower lows. Okay wave sequences etc nothing moves in one direction continuously so then we, we start to plot so we see the move lower first of all it started off with an inside bar okay so the inside bar shows us that we've got investor indecision which we talked about before we then break to the downside we then get a mild correction higher and we get a correction Literally pit perfect to the Marabuzo level. Okay, 128, uh, 129.83, and the high was 129.85. There's actually one and a half points in it. Okay, a bearish outside bar, and then we move lower. And we can count again the waves in here. And I'm not fanatical, believe it or not, about any wave, but you can see, okay, it's five wave sequence lower, and it's impulsive. Okay, the market is strong to the downside. Profit takers come in around the previous low, okay, previous swing low, and we move higher. So what makes this now a prime opportunity? Okay, a prime opportunity comes from the risk reward and from a decent symmetrical pattern. And again, um, I've got a PDF. Okay, so if anybody wants uh, me to forward them a PDF with the symmetrical patterns on them. Uh, I will do at the end of uh, at the end of today's uh, webinar, um, and I'll just post my email address in here. Okay, a few guys, um, if you want to, uh, to to get it. Okay, so what we do is we put a retracement tool on. Okay, so we take a retracement tool. I'm just going to remove that channel. So that retracement to this off to two forty minutes. Okay. And we want to note this price action. Okay. Now, in a symmetrical um, Gartley pattern, the first wave is to around sixty one point eight percent. So we can see here we moved up and I'll just move this across a bit so we get it a bit in a bit of detail. Okay. So we move up to towards 61.8%, which is here. Okay, we then get the next leg lower. Now we know that corrective sequences are normally in free wave patterns. Okay, so we move lower. Now, for um, a bullish Gartley formation, we want to be retracing to around sort of 38.2%. Um, okay. Actually, stop short 23.6. But what makes this attractive okay, is this level here, okay, the 78.6. So, and again, so many traders concentrate on 61.8%, where 78.6 and 127.2, okay, so 78.6% is a retracement level, 78.127.2 uh, is an extension level. And they make up um, a lot of um, symmetrical patterns. So we then want to measure out our move, our move to the upside. Okay, so we've got a low here, 128.01, a high here, 129.26, a low here, 128.42. Okay. And then, if we take our calculator, okay, 129.26 minus 128.01, we've got a range here of 125 pips. So this swing is 125 pips, okay? 125. Okay, so then we add 125 pips onto 128.42. What does it give us? 129.67. And you can see where I'm coming from here. 129.67. A 
and the high trade up to now has been 129.69. Okay, so it's a beautiful, as Steve Fish just put, um, it's a beautiful uh, harmonic Gartley pattern. Okay, so we've got an A B C D to so A B C D formation here. We've got 78.6, and just to show you the Gartley. Okay, and then if we, I mean, we've just sold it at one twenty nine sixty blindly um, because the formation, as DV just said, is uh, is is pretty solid. Um, but if you're unsure, you can then break it down through time frames. Okay, so we're on two forty minutes. Take it to a sixty minute. Looks like we're going to get an inside bar. Oh, Eleven forty. It might break to the downside. Um, we can break it down. Fifteen minutes or thirty minutes. Okay, inside bar that's broken to the downside. Fifteen minutes. Inside bar that's broken to the downside. Okay, actually formed a triangle formation. Ten minutes. Inside bar. Blah 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 blah. Uh, and five minutes. Okay, inside bar. And not only that, the inside on these five minutes, okay, we've stayed inside this range, but then we've gone up and then we've produced a lower high, okay, and the market moves to the downside, okay. The risk on this trade, for us anyway, um, 2.40 minutes, okay, we've put our risk above here because the risk reward is still good, okay. Might get a spike up, might even get to 88.6%. I don't think so now. Uh, I think 129.60 is quite a solid um, entry uh, level. Um, and the risk reward, as we said, you know, going back, so then we break it into our higher time frames. Um, we get across again, our trend channel, okay, move it lower. And for retracements, you know, after a five wave sequence up, we should at least retrace the 38.2. So it's lining up really well for 126.77. So, you know, we've got what 60, 55 pips stop, and we've got potential for 300 pips to the downside. So, um, you know, about 61 risk reward. Yeah, I mean, we 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 won't run it all all to the to the base. Um, but you know, it's 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 just showing how the fib levels in larger time frames and shorter time frames can then produce very decent um, risk reward trades. And that's just an example, obviously, with Eurocad. Uh, any questions? Um, about that one. Anybody a bit confused? Anybody got anything to ask? So that's that's using a vanilla chart basically. It's, it's got nothing on it uh, uh, apart from price action really and, um, and, and fib levels. So let's um, and we can look at different things. Okay, it's not it's not just symmetrical patterns. Uh, it's not just any at wave. Okay, um, there's so many different ways that we can use the fibs. Okay, so we're going to look at another pair. Okay, cable. When you look at the weekly, it looks quite messy, doesn't it? Um, you know, trends have been broken. Obviously, there's a decent trend coming in off here. Got broken to the upside, and then pulled back. Um, weekly, such a strong sell-off, then an inside bar, then a move back up, and then this was quite choppy, but then inside bars, two inside bars, and it broke to the upside, um, and then we had a decent rally up. So, we're taking it down again to dailies. Okay, so we've got, this is our first swing here. Note, note the inside bar at the base. You'd have been a bit brave to have, to have bought that one, but um, and then it was quite it was quite choppy 
around here, but it did sort of form a higher highs. It was always hinting that it was going to break to the upside. Then we then got a retest. <coughs> Notice on the retest that we got bullish outside bar. Okay, the low was never broken. This one would have obviously made us have a little bit of a rethink um, before the before the move back up. But then this moved lower. Okay. Again, okay, going to fibs, and this time we're using our fib retracement tool. Okay, we take it to it's not off there. Sorry, this swing below. Okay, and if we now look at our retracement tools, okay, we can see that we get a very messy, but five waves. Okay, three waves, three waves. So remember what we're talking about, corrective sequences. And sometimes they can be pretty hard uh, to predict. But this has got all, and, and, the, and the waves overlap, etc., etc. But we've got one, two, three, four, five, okay, three up, and then, and then down. Okay, to 38.2. I think the actual low price was 159.15, if I remember rightly, 14. So it was bang, bang on the button, okay. So again, if we're unsure, we break it down. And I just break it down through the time frames. So here, we've got 240 minutes. So one, two, three, four, five. Inside bar at 38.2% retracement. Okay, it actually formed a very small triangle formation in there, um, and it broke to the upside. Okay. That's my reminder going off for FX Street webinar there. <laughs> um, and then we've had this really strong move up, but it paused. And we're only supposed to be talking about um, things, but just to show you where else came in. Okay, it paused at the trend of lower highs. So we've got this move up inside bar. And then we move to the downside. And we bought cable this morning, by the way. We bought cable, we bought euro, uh, dollar, um, Aussie dollar for small. And dollar yen was actually, we've um, been talking in our weekly one about a trigger at 79.90 uh, to the downside because, again, that's got another symmetrical pattern that we can have a quick look at if we've got time. Um, so, inside bar, move to the downside. And then again, we just go back. 60 minutes, take our extension, and another reason why we were due a correction, okay, we take our extension tool, okay, 261.8% and the trend of lower highs, okay, so it hit a couple of times, this was the reversed, so we moved higher, um, we've got an outside engulfing, the market couldn't take, even though it opened higher this week, it couldn't, uh, it couldn't break the high, and then we got this move back down. So we move that off, and we go to our retracement tool. Okay, and here we've got 61.8%. Now it's not great, um, even from breaking down into time frames if you want to sort of desperately look for something to, to trigger you along. We don't get any inside or outside bars. When we move up and then we consolidate okay, overnight, um, so we go back to 60 minutes, okay. but this move is choppy and corrective. Okay. And we get this outside bar. We actually bought the break of the uh, of the high at seven o'clock this morning, because we can then go back into 15 minutes. You see why a lot of my analysis is called time frame breakdowns. Okay, the fib retracement goes back to between 50 and 61.8 percent. I then break the high, and then I want extension tools. Okay, so actually overshot 
pulled back, didn't break the low, okay, of this swing high, which is was was support, was resistance, sorry, now support, okay. So it moves lower, and then we should be targeting. Uh, we've actually got a target level at 160.90, so just stepping inside of the uh, of the fib. But the bias, okay, is to the upside. We've had from the daily, we've had the move higher, we've had the retracement to 38.2. The market is then trying to make a higher low, which you probably will do today. We're still going to form an inside bar today. Um, you know, if we get to this 261.8% retracement level, it's 160.95. It's an inside bar. So what what does that tell us? Well, we've got indecision again. It's, it wasn't as strong as the sell-off yesterday. But that's all it is. It's indecision. So if we then look to our short-term fibs, okay, our 15-minute fibs, then tomorrow, depending on, on, on obviously where we, where we end up today, we then look for more retracement levels. And we know that around here is a decent area for a pullback, okay? It's a previous resistance level. It's now become support. So if it moves up to this level and pushes back down towards 160.52, that would be a prime area to enter, okay? So it's all about projections, price action, big picture, okay? Try and get the big picture and then break it down into your into your uh, your smaller time frames. Let's just see how Eurocam's getting on while we're here. Just stalling a bit near our entry actually. Okay, um, dollar yen. Um, why did we have um, seventy nine ninety um, as a as a sell trigger level, okay? And again, we want to break it down through time frames. So here, doesn't really show us a lot. Um, we've got inside price action this week up to now, but it's only Tuesday, okay? But we've got spikes higher uh, through 80. There's no real sub sort of support resistance coming in on the weekly chart. And it's very, very messy, okay, dollar yen. Uh, so the weekly doesn't really show us a great deal. But then we break it down into our daily, okay? And this becomes far more interesting, okay? We take this first swing, stops at 78.6%, 61.8% again is the prime, but we make, okay, and obviously notice the price action again here. So we've got an outside bar here. Look at this which pushes price action to the downside. We then get an outside buy here, which pushes price action to the upside. What happens on this leg? Well, we've got a um, fat buzo coming in again, okay? So we've got a fat buzo, marabuzo. It's not actually highlighted on here, but it's virtually pit perfect at uh, 77, 78, okay? So the, the, the bullish engulfing day, small re retracement to test, um, fib extensions are used on the first swing. It depends. Okay, nothing simple. Um, it depends um, where what we're looking at. Are we looking at an Elliott wave formation or are we looking at a symmetrical pattern? This time we're actually looking at a symmetrical pattern. So what we're looking to do, we take the low. First swing high, this is our extension tool, okay, and then we pull it lower. Not sure if I'm on the right bit here. Let's look at my main uh, charts. Look at so many things all day, sometimes I forget, but I've just got it on blank where I'm supposed to be. 7967 got 7967 here got 7923 here okay i've got 7713 here 
7742 here. Okay. And on this occasion, okay, I'm actually taking this swing, okay, this this high from this low, and I want my extension tool. So I place my extension tool on the low and move up to 7967. And I've noted it there because I thought it's very difficult to, to pull across. Okay, 7967. And then bring it all the way back down. And this gives me my extension, okay, which is 127%. So it's a 127% extension from this level, okay, this swing. Um, and that basically makes. And symmetrical butterfly pattern, okay, on the daily chart. So wary of um, of a sell off from this level, okay, from 127, which is 8032, I think. What was the high? Uh, the, high the high was 8039, so I overstepped it by nine pips. But what makes this even more beautiful is that you're you're selling into a very strong trend. Okay, we've got bullish outside, bullish outside. Okay, numerous moves to the upside, and there's no indication that this upside is that this rally is ending. Okay, so your risk reward because you're trying to catch tops and bottoms is very very good. Um, we can break this down to two forty minutes. Okay, we've got, th and this is what I mean by an outside bar. Okay, let's just remove the trend. It's not an engulfing. Okay, because the 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 red candle does not close below the body of the of the of the green candle. Okay, but it is an outside bar. The market has tried to go higher. It's come lower. And if we go into really short time frames, take down to fifteen minutes. Over here, okay. We're then getting swings, okay. So we're getting higher highs and higher lows as the market moves to the downside. Now, what makes a game 79.90 as being the prime um, sell level this morning is because we watched price action yesterday. So we had a bearish outside bar, okay, on Friday. We then get a small inside bar. Which shows us investor indecision. We've then got the Marabuzo, okay, so we've got the Marabuzo level at 79.97, and we know that we've got a decent trigger level there, if you like. It's not just, okay, the Marabuzo, but when we look back, it's also a previous area of support and resistance, so we've broken through it, retest. And then a move to the downside. Now, obviously, the beauty about these symmetrical patterns, like we said before, is the risk reward. Um, so, the risk now is obviously above the high. The, raw, the reward minimum is 61.8% of the whole sequence. And again, we just step inside, I think we're in the 78.45. So, <coughs> the reward level is down here. So risk is that. Okay, reward is that. It's probably about three and a half to one. Yeah, and an outside bar is a bar that completely engulfs the previous bar. So this is an outside bar, okay? The market on Friday originally moved slightly higher, but the bears, the bulls were in control at the open, took it higher, then the bears took control and, and moved it lower. So an outside bar completely, the, the range completely takes over the previous candle's range, okay? So that's an outside bar. This one's an outside bar, this one's an outside bar, this one's an outside bar, etc, etc, etc. An inside bar is completely opposite to an outside bar in the fact that it shows investor indecision. So, strong sell-off yesterday, uh, sorry, uh, on Friday, we then get an inside bar. So, while it's inside the range, it is, they're actually called inside soldiers. Um, 
while it's inside the range, it shows that there's indecision there. Okay, you might be a corrective sequence, you might not. Um, it might uh, it might be a reversal, but you need to watch price action and look at your bigger picture. Okay, to to, to define. Here's a great outside bar. Okay, and where was the trigger level to sell? Was it the Marabuzo? Okay, this one here from yesterday. It's not only um, the Marabuzo. It's not only. And we want to line up as many things as we can. Okay, so it's not only the Marabuzo. Look, it's not only a previous area of resistance. We then take it to shorter time frames. Retracement. Okay, it's in between 50 and 61.8 percent as well. So we know we're sort of in a decent range. We know there's numerous reasons why sellers should be should be getting bearish here. I mean, luckily enough, we had the uh, we obviously had the Bank of Japan overnight, okay? And also, you want to be looking at the speed, but basically an outside bar would normally form quite an erratic uh, or an impulsive move on the intraday, uh, intraday sh uh, charts. And we can see here that this move is very, is very strong to the downside, okay? I'm not going to take a, a trend from there, but you know, if you take a trend, say from there, you can see by the angle of attack, okay, that this is impulsive. This is corrective. How many waves have we got on the way up? Well, we've got one, two, three. How many inner waves have we got? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, maybe five here. You really want to get, you know, one, two, three, four, five. And that's what I say, that, that, that third wave. Is always the hardest way to. Uh, um, no, it's, the, it's not the high and the low. It's the open and, uh, and the close divided by two. The so Marabuzo level. A lot of chart packages do it for you. Nothing wrong with being lazy if you've got the tools. Um, and obviously this one, uh, this one does. So again, risk rewards great. It offers us ample uh, reward. Our stops now in, in into entry. Uh, so we haven't got any risk left on this uh, on this trade. Okay, but it's also quite important to know um, when you know the um, the targets have been uh, have been reached in these uh, symmetrical patterns, because then you can start to formulate a bias with 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 regards to uh, currency pair correlation. Okay, the euro yen. We had a medium term target of 102.25. That was reached overnight. Now, we can still see, or I can still see, dollar yen lower. So, if I can see dollar yen lower, I can see euro yen higher. I really had to be bullish in euro dollar this morning. Otherwise, I've got sunk out of sync. Okay, my, my correlation is all over the place. Um, going back to, we said we'd talk about euro sterling quickly, didn't we? So we get to throw it off anyway. Okay. So Euro uh, chop chop all the way up. Choppy trading. Um, okay, weekly. Bearish outside bar here, okay. We know this is an area of resistance. We got a bearish outside bar last week, but we, all, we we actually sold sold this um, this move down. Um, so again, trend channel. Okay, it's got plenty of room to move to the downside. Um, how do we? We actually took. I don't think we took profit at 80 the figure. We actually bought the dip on um, on Friday, um, and, the, and again, reasons behind that. Okay, it's looking at it's looking at everything. Um, so we've looked at Gartley, we've looked at bearish butterfly. There's also the bat, uh, the crab, three drives pattern, and the ABCD formation. Now the ABCD formation is another uh, symmetrical pattern. We could look to this, and it's strangely enough that both 
sort of uh, analysis lined up. Okay. We could look at this for the extensions, but it didn't work. Okay. This was um, a small swing higher. It then overextended 261.8% and massively over, overextended 261.8%. Um, okay. So what made this look overcooked down the bottom? So again, we just you can't be lazy. You've got to keep looking at it, keep trying to work out patterns, uh, swings, um, potential target levels. Risk reward is it good? Is it worth it? Okay. So here, eighty-one sixty-six minus eighty seventy-six. Don't need a calculator for that, really, do I? Um, so ninety pips. So eighty ten. Okay, is an ABCD formation. So again, you just want to put your horizontal line on your chart, and then you want to look at it. Okay, play it down to the level or close to the level. If you get reversal, um, if you get reversal patterns, then obviously tighten up your stop or get out. Okay, and then break it down for time frames. They're here. We we're looking for the sell-off to extend. What did we get around 80.10? We've got an inside bar, and we bought the break of this bar back to the upside. Okay, and this was on Friday. It wasn't great gain, 20 odd ticks. Okay, um, but this whole pattern again is looking poor. Um, this is impulsive. This is corrective. I'm not going to draw another line on here. Um, this is 80 the figure. Okay, this is 80.46. We've got 46 pips. Okay, this is the low. 84.24, the swing. Okay, so I can put my 46 pips onto 80.24, 80.70. Remember, I'm looking for something to come lower. What was the high today? Up to now, 80.70. Okay, I've got resistance here at 80.76. What else have I got? Okay, so I've got an ABC correction to here. I haven't got a decent bar. I mean, I've been watching this this morning. I haven't called a sell. I've called I've called a sell rallies, and I've got a trigger at 8076, but I haven't executed a trade yet because even if I'm breaking it down through my time frames, yeah, I'm getting spikes. Have I made a lower high yet? No. 15 minutes, 30 minutes doesn't look great. 15 minutes. Again, it's not an outside bar. I haven't made a swing. It, it, it's tempting me in. I've got an ABC for D formation. I know I want to sell it. Um, my risk reward isn't great yet. So I'm sort of sitting on my hands. If I go to the weekly, sorry to keep on flicking through, remove all these studies off again. Okay, what's here? 8087. So horizontal line. 8087. Go back to my 240 minutes. Okay, good retracement. Okay, a nice confluence area. So, a lot of the time when, when the market trends down so strongly, it doesn't meet 50 and 61.8 percent, it only gets to 38 points. So, so, this is sort of screaming out now. Um, to be looking for sell signals, but like I say, I don't like to fudge it. We've got an inside bar here and a 10 minute break. It could well be heading lower now. Um, risk reward isn't bad actually to, to, to call a, a sell trade because you could you could put one on here, stop above the Marabuzo, which is 26 pips, um, and then going back to weekly. I need to flick through so quick, but I'm sure we're running out of time. Okay, target level 79.61. So again, you've got 100 pips, 4 to 1 risk reward. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for decent risk reward levels, okay, using price action, using FIB levels, using inside outside bars. 
and using Maribu's oats. Sterling kiwi. I don't even look at that. Thanks. <laughs> Jesus. You're either emigrating or um, to spread on this. This must be massive. Okay, what we got? Bullish outside bar here. Okay, pin bar here. Um, looks like a larger time frame uh, ascending triangle formation as a bias to break to the upside. However, the move down has been quite strong, but then again, so is the move up. Um, break it down through time frames. Inside bar. This doesn't look like a five wave, maybe it is a five wave sequence. Okay, it's very hard if you're not on them all the time. Um, <laughs> my honest answer would be to leave well alone. Um, it's choppy as hell. You've got an inside bar here, takes you down. You've got an outside body bar, you've got an inside bar, you're in the channel, it looks corrective. It could potentially break to the downside and then move towards this um, trend line base and then move back up. Um, I had to make a call, which I'm glad I don't. Getting an outside engulfing here off 240 minutes, but there's no real patterns in here that I can see. Um, Mildly bullish off a two two forty minute chart, but then again, I'd have to stop in really really tight because it's just not not correct. I've suddenly turned into a request service. <laughs> if if I had to do anything. I'll wait to see if it gets up towards 196, the figure, um, which is obviously an area, previous area of price action. I'd then look for a dip to buy into, but like I say, I don't have to. So I mean, 240 minutes is giving it a slightly bullish bias, but why trade this when there's loads of other currency pairs that you can look at? I don't, I don't look at any obscure ones. Okay, we've got a bit of divergence coming in here off a of wedge formation. Um, the moves down look far more impulsive than the moves up. Mildly, mildly bullish again in the ABCD formation, but probably up towards sort of 61.8 percent until this wedge breakout. I think you're going to keep on being choppy. Um, so these channels are all corrective, and the, the moves to the downside are quite impulsive. That looks about a target level for that anyway. So yeah, I'd have a, a mild um, bullish bias. Now these are the spot; these are all spot levels. Um, 
Let's just see what Dollar Swiss is doing. Let's have a look at our Euro CAD. See if she's playing out as she should be. Just an inside bar, okay, on the 60 minutes at the moment. So it's not marvellous, um, but I don't think we we're ever going to engulf. Um, so we just need a break to the downside. Um, and then we'll probably get a little, little bounce off this trend first. Um, any questions at all? That was dollars R, not sterling Kiwi. Okay, well, I'm, like I said, I, I, I don't, I don't look at it, so I prefer not to comment if that's all right with you. This is CQG. Any um, any questions at all, guys? Apart from what chart package is this? USD Zara. Is that not what we were looking at? Obviously not. <laughs> okay, let's break it down. Inside buy yesterday or last week after a strong move up. Momentum break into the downside. So we've got divergence that's showing. It's quite decent. the spread in this, I bet the spread is humongous. It's going nowhere is it? I mean the bias is mildly bearish. Um, that's really, if anything, I, if I had to do anything, which I don't, I said I'd just concentrate on the ones that I like. It's just consolidating. I mean, you've got a wedge formation, inside triangle formations. You below the RSI, which is giving it a slightly bearish bias. You need to see a break of that triangle formation to probably take you down to the wedge base at 83. Um, I then calculate that 1, 2, 3. So I calculate the high. Uh, to do, to do. Is eight nine zero forty. Let's low here. Eight fifty four sixty five. This high here. Eight eight two sixty. Five four six five. Eight nine zero forty minus. Four thousand four hundred and seventy five. Four thousand four hundred and seventy five. Eight three seven eight five. So that would have a target level. Around about here. <coughs> this is the previous area of price protection. The yeah, mild bearish bias, but it's got to break this. It's got to dip through this, this, um, this move to the downside. Oh, we didn't do euro, Don. 
Don's just saying, uh, can we do a quick review of the euro dollar? But um, we didn't cover euro dollar today. Um, we bought it this morning. Um, again, I've got some sort of weird and wonderful. This is euro dollar 240. Uh, February tracement. There's a few things that lined up here this morning. Okay, we've got solid support coming in at 78.6%. Okay, but this leg here wasn't great. Okay, so it's very skewed, even if you wanted to sort of call it a, um, a bullish pattern, a Gartley. It's, it is quite messy. Um, but we did buy it, um, saying that. But more sort of based on. Let's get rid of that. Daily. Um, where's my trend line? Is this your red dollar? Yeah. It was more based on that that trend um, than it was on the, uh, on the on the on the pattern. What I think we're in so is a decent sort of triangle formation. I think it's going to break to the upside. I think we're going to get an inside bar today. I think further buying is going to be limited, um, and then maybe a dip tomorrow, and then and then a push back up. Um, I'm pretty bullish on the pair. The retracement tools didn't give us much to go at. If we break this triangle to the downside, then I'm only looking to target 127.42. But sort of intraday analysis. Um, looks uh, looks looks pretty good to me for for a move up. And like I said, it was really just taken off off a treble bottom. We've got an outside bullish bar, um, about 78.6 percent. So the bias was mildly uh, was was mildly bullish. Okay, any questions, guys? Before we wrap it up, and I do apologise about the late start, but we've. We've run over by 20 minutes, so I hope you'll, uh, you'll forgive me. So just to wrap it up, symmetrical patterns, all we've looked today is price action. We've looked at some, some naked charts. Um, we've looked at bullish outside bars, inside of army bars. We've looked at Marabuzo levels, and we've just looked at fibs. Okay, just pure naked fibs. I do combine this in with support and resistance levels that I've developed. Um, I do combine this in with um, tomorrow side bias basis. I do combine this in with the cloud formation. Um, so, would I just recommend trading off naked charts? No, but it gives you such a good background. Okay, into being able to spot things that um, that will possibly make the market re reverse, and it's all about risk reward. Okay, these Gartleys, these pullback levels, these Marabuzo levels uh, produce some very very nice entries. Okay, and if you miss one, don't kick yourself. We don't. We, we you know sometimes we. We worry about the ones that got away. It's not about the ones that got away. It's the ones you, the ones that you catch, and you will catch some. Okay. Thanks very much for attending today. I uh, hope you've all enjoyed it. And uh, if anybody wants that PDF, um, feel free to uh, to drop me an email. Okay, guys. Good luck. Um, thanks. I'm sure it's Vicky um, for letting us uh, host another webinar, and uh, we'll speak to you again soon. Okay. Thanks guys, bye.